So for the past week, I've had my SIM card buried away in this delightfully shiny weed blower right here, the Xiaomi 13. And while it's almighty sibling, the massive Xiaomi 13 Pro may be the one stealing all of the spotlight action, this regular plain old Xiaomi 13 is well worth considering if you're after a crotch thrustingly powerful do-it-all flagship. Not least because the 849 quid asking price isn't quite as sack shriveling as what you'll pay for that Pro model. Now I actually moved to the Xiaomi 13 immediately after finishing my Samsung Galaxy S23 review and these two blowers are very similar in many respects. Not least because they cost a very similar amount as well, but is the Xiaomi 13 a worthy alternative to the Galaxy S23 and is it worth your cash? Well, here's my full in-depth review and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do post subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So let's start with the design, why not? And in this regard, the Xiaomi 13 really could not be much more different to the Xiaomi 13 Pro. At just 6.36 inches, the Xiaomi 13 is technically one of the most compact smartphones of 2023, just after the Samsung Galaxy S23, of course. And it's certainly a hell of a lot more hand-friendly than that Pro model. At just 189 grams, it's rather light for a flagship as well, while the screen is perfectly flat rather than curved at the edges still with minimal bezel action surrounding it. You've got a glass front and back here with an aluminium chassis sandwiched in between, all traits that it once again shares with Samsung's Galaxy S23. And so far, after a rough and tumble week, there isn't a single sign of wear and tear on any of those shiny surfaces. While that IP68 water-resistant design means you can still comfortably browse your TikToks while it's absolutely shitting it down outside. And I gotta say, I do like the look of the Xiaomi 13. It's sleek, it's smart, although that camera bump is a wee bit too bumpy, I guess. It does stick out quite a bit, although no worse than the S23's standalone lenses. And I absolutely adore how, even though you've got a really shiny back end here, this phone does a remarkably good job of keeping clean. Or rather, it does a bang up job of looking like it's completely clean, but when the light strikes that back end just so you can see it is a little bit smudgy and oily. But look at it head on, and honestly, you wouldn't even be able to tell. However, I do have one grumble, and that's that in other parts of the world, you can pick up the Xiaomi 13 in a rainbow range of bright, lovely colours, including this rather lovely and fairly subtle green effort. However, venture onto Xiaomi's UK website, and you'll find that this phone is available in just one single solitary colour. Black. Dark and dismal to match the colour of our souls, I guess. Anyway, once you stop fannying around, fawning over the attractive compact finish and actually switch the sodden thing on, you're confronted with Xiaomi's MIUI 14 launcher, slathered on top of Android 13. And it's basically the same software experience as what you would get with Xiaomi's 13 Pro. Now starting with some of the grumbly bits, the Xiaomi 13 is absolutely overflowing with crapware as usual. So I highly recommend just getting rid of all of that straight off the bat. But even if you can't be asked to delete any of that, you'll have tons of storage to play with because Xiaomi has chucked 512 gigs of the stuff into the Xiaomi 13, which makes it slightly less important that there's no micro SD memory card support. Now I did notice a couple of quirks over the past week, such as for instance, the always on display sometimes can't be bothered to actually always display, even when I actually shut off the scheduling and turn it on full time. Otherwise, thankfully the Xiaomi 13 has been really well behaved this past week and the good news is you've got three guaranteed years of OS updates and five years of security updates even more than Xiaomi offered on last year's flagships. So as far as longevity is concerned, this thing should be more than a match for the likes of Samsung and OnePlus and the other really dedicated manufacturers out there. You've got all the usual excellent Android 13 features on board including the excellent privacy tools. And of course, MIUI chucks a fair few extra bits on there as well, including dedicated video tools and a proper full-on gaming mode as well, which I'll show off in a bit. You've also got an in-display optical fingerprint sensor for your security needs, and this works an absolute charm. I very rarely have to fall back on the facial recognition. It's only really if my hands are super grubby after I've been doing a bit of cooking in the kitchen or if I've literally just washed my hands. Now, that 6.36 inch OLED display isn't quite as spacious as many rivals, but it's still an absolute cracker. The Full HD Plus resolution keeps visuals crisp and you have both Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus video support here, whereas some rivals only give you a bit of HDR10 Plus love. Movies and shows look bloody fantastic, with only a weenie selfie cam orifice invading that action when you pinch in. And this panel is bright enough to keep things easy on the eye when you're outdoors with auto brightness that doesn't often go haywire. And the refresh rate of that display maxes out at 120Hz again, although it's not LTPO tech unlike the Pro, so it can't scale all the way down to preserve battery life. 
Now those bloody loud stereo speakers are great when you're trying to watch something in a noisy place like a busy kitchen with a kid blasting her recorder in the background. Though the actual audio quality ain't great, so you'll definitely want to slap in some earbuds for a bit of music with support for 24-bit audio streaming via Bluetooth 5.3. Now that nifty wee feature comes courtesy of Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset which powers the Xiaomi 13, exactly the same platform as used in the Pro. And this is also the Qualcomm chipset you'll find stuffed inside of the Samsung Galaxy S23 as well and I found that the everyday action here was just as smooth. I found that when I was gaming the Xiaomi 13 does get a wee bit warm if you get your Genshin on for extended periods but it never actually toasted my fingertips and the performance was never impacted that frame rate stays fluid even as you pass the hour mark. And yes, you do have a full on gaming menu that you can yank out at any point when you are busy blazing through Genshin Impact, Call of Duty, PUBG, whatever your game of choice is. And this can help you by blocking any unwanted distractions, you can tweak the screen sensitivity, all kinds of stuff. As for the battery life, well, it's a 4,500 mAh capacity cell that is crammed inside of that compact Xiaomi 13 chassis, not much smaller than what you got in that Pro, and a wee bit bigger than what Samsung managed to pack into the Galaxy S23, although I've got to say the battery life so far hasn't been quite as good here on the Xiaomi 13 as that Galaxy S23. I never actually ran out of juice before the end of a very long day, even with plenty of screen on time, I'm talking six or seven hours, but on a couple of occasions I did make it to bed with just one or two percent left in the tank, it was really, really tight. However, most days when I finally collapsed face first onto my pillow, I still had around 15% battery life remaining, and that is with the power mode set to performance permanently. As for battery recharging, well the Xiaomi 13 supports 67 watt wired charging as well as 50 watt wireless charging, which all seems a bit tame compared with the 240 watt wired charging of the Realme GT3, which is actually a cheaper flagship alternative. Not that it really matters because it's still pretty bloody nippy, you'll get a full charge of the Xiaomi 13 in well under an hour, and it's certainly a lot quicker than the Galaxy S23. So let's finish with a squint at the camera tech and the Xiaomi 13 spots a 50 meg primary shooter for everyday photography shenanigans, although it's Sony's IMX800 instead of the 1 inch IMX989 Whopper found in the Pro. But just like the Pro model it's not any bog standard optical image stabilisation crammed into the Xiaomi 13's camera tech, oh f no, it's hyper OIS all the way baby. Now when you're snapping away in auto mode you have a choice of a Leica Vibrant or Leica Authentic, with the former boosting tones a wee bit to make your pics really stand out, especially when you're snapping a blue sky or some vibrant plant life. I mostly stuck with Vibrant because it's not too full on, it's kind of similar to Samsung's processing on the Galaxy S23. The Xiaomi 13 is great for action snaps with the kids and pets. Even when they're dodging about all over the shop you don't tend to get many fuzzy pics as long as the light is good. And HDR situations aren't much bother either, providing you're not trying to shoot directly in the sun or anything nuts like that. Ambient indoor shots generally come out quite well too, with a respectable amount of detail packed into every still, and not much grain either. Tones are remarkably accurate, but when the lighting is in scarce supply, the Xiaomi 13 can't match the supersized sensor of the Xiaomi 13 Pro. I still found that my night shots were better than those captured on the Samsung Galaxy S23, but colours do start to warp and the night mode only really helps to brighten things up a wee bit. Now switch across to the 10 megapixel telephoto lens with 3.2 times optical zoom and you can get closer to your subject without sticking a phone right in their face. This proved particularly good for those portrait snaps. You can crop in further if you like, although the low megapixel count does mean that detail levels drop fairly swiftly. That's another area where the Pro is a better option. And last up there's a pretty standard 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter which is absolutely fine for grabbing a more dramatic pick and it does the job when you're snapping something ruddy massive. And as usual you've got loads of extra modes beyond the portrait mode and the night mode to play around with if you're a fan of all that jazz. Bit of super moon action, naturally. Is anyone still taking pictures of the moon? Haven't you got enough pictures of the moon yet? And like most flagship phones these days, the Xiaomi 13 can also capture 8K resolution video with impressively smooth stabilisation. Another win for that Hyper OIS. In low light the lens sometimes struggles to focus and things can get rather noisy, but at all other times I was happy with the picture quality and the audio comes through nice and clear. And last up that 32 megapixel selfie snapper is a bit of a corker, making sure that your face is sharply in focus at all times with another successful portrait mode to blur out the background. Even in low light it generally works well with the screen flash mode when things get proper dark. 
Sadly, no 8K shenanigans using that front-facing selfie camera, but you can shoot up to full HD resolution video. The audio pickup's fine. Again, no issues with Skype and or any of that stuff, as you would certainly expect from a modern smartphone and especially a flagship one. So that right there, my lovelies, is my full final frank review of the Xiaomi 13 after using it as my full-time smartphone for just over a week. And I've got to say, I rather like this blower. It's certainly better than Samsung's Galaxy S23 flagship in some key areas like the design. I actually really like the look and feel of this thing as well. And also the low light photography chops are a bit better as well. Of course, Samsung's Galaxy S23 is better than the Xiaomi 13 in some respects. I found the battery life was a bit better. As for the UI, well, that's more a case of personal taste. But at least you've got the excellent software support on here, just like the Samsung. And also the performance is a dead match as well. So anyway, that's what I reckon. Do you guys like the Xiaomi 13 as well? Have you actually been using it as your full-time smartphone? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everybody. Love you.